Hi everyone, this is the video on why do populations vary in size and it's related to the AQA A-Level Biology 3.7.4 populations in ecosystems. So today we're going to be looking at carrying capacity, uh, abiotic and biotic factors. Now in terms of looking at population, we need to understand how populations grow and then become stable. So uh, as it says here, stable populations occupying a fixed geographic space demonstrate what we call a sigmoidal or S-shaped population growth curve. So the first phase is lag phase. So initially you get a few reproductive individuals and they are likely to be widely dispersed and then they start to produce offspring and numbers accumulate and then you get a rapid increase and that rapid increase is related to an exponential exponential growth phase um, and mortality is low so that means uh, not many are dying because they're abundant resources so there's lots of food and lots of availability of resources and minimal environmental resistance. So then you get to a transitional phase. So uh, growth starts to slow, it still increases, but it, it starts to slow because you're getting more competition uh, for survival, whether that be competition with individuals of the same species or with different species. And then you reach a plateau phase or stationary phase. So eventually growth becomes static and the population has reached what we call a carrying capacity. You can know uh, you can't increase any growth further in that population unless there is a change in the environment or there's um, more resources available because eventually populations will be limited. They'll be limited by factors that keep the population stable that we'll talk about in a minute. So populations oscillate. In other words, they fluctuate, um, they increase and decrease around the carrying capacity um, as long as certain conditions remain the same or in similar conditions. So just a quick reminder, so populations, remember that populations is the total number of organisms of one species in a habitat. This changes over time because of the effect of various factors. And we're going to talk about abiotic and biotic factors today. And there is a maximum stable population size of a species that an ecosystem can support, and it's known as the carrying capacity. So let's go through uh, some of these factors. So the first type of factors are abiotic factors, and these are the non-living factors of the environment that will affect the growth or reproduction of a population. So firstly, temperature. So temperature, each species has an optimum temperature for survival. So if it's too cold, enzymes work too slowly and therefore uh, growth may not occur or be very slow. Or if the temperature is too high, enzymes could be denatured um, and therefore will slow growth, even stop growth, reduce reproductive rates. And it reduces the carrying capacity of an organism unless it's kept within really set defined levels that the organism can survive in depending on its adaptations. Uh, second point is light. So particularly affects plants because rates of photosynthesis increase in higher light intensity. And this increases plant growth, producing and releasing seeds, increasing the spread and therefore carrying capacity so that plants spread their seeds so that they can therefore increase their population. In turn, that will produce more food for animals as well in food chains. Third abiotic factor that's important is pH, because again, pH affects enzyme activity. So a population is larger where the pH is at an optimum level. Uh, certain plants prefer alkaline soils, others prefer acidic soils. So that will um, kind of limit the growth of certain species in, in certain environments. And last one is about water and humidity. So where water is scarce, populations are small uh, unless they are very highly adapted species. Humidity affects the rates of transpiration, as you would have looked at in mass transport of plants. So in dry conditions, loss of water from plants can increase. So this will reduce populations of plants that are not adapted for these particular conditions. 
OK, I'd like you to have a look at this question. So what I would like you to do is pause the video uh, in a second and I'd like you to read and have a look at the questions and try and answer the questions um, on a piece of paper, please. So pause now. OK, and here are the answers. So uh, number one, state the number box that best fits each of the descriptions. So only a population of species X. So if you look at species X there and there, you, if you feed it up, you can see that it is in one. OK, both B, both temperature and pH allows a population of both species to exist. Well, um, if you look at the temperature, for species X, species Y in the middle, and therefore it will be three, which is, uh, so B is three. And then C, the temperature, temperature is too high for populations of species X, and the pH is too low for a population of species Y. So if we look at species X um, uh, and the pH, so temperature is too high, so you can see species X populations there. So it's not occurring in this square. And for Y, the pH is too low. Well, you look at species Y and it's too low. So that means it is square two. Uh, so that's the answer. And then D, there is competition between species X and species Y. Well, there's competition where both populations exist. And you can see that that is square three. Uh, explain why there is no population of either species in box four. And as it says there, the pH is too high for species X and the temperature is too low for species Y. So obviously populations of uh, species don't live in isolation they live with each other and that means that we have what we call biotic factors so these are the living factors that would affect um, a population of species and ultimately we're talking about things like competition so competition between individuals of the same species or different species is very important and also linked with that is abiotic factors that affect the amounts of food availability so First one, so amount of food available. So the more food, the greater chance of survival and reproductive rates increases. So if there's more food, your carrying capacity is going to increase. Um, obviously, if there's a kind of more severe weather, um, weather patterns, then that might reduce food availability and reduce carrying capacity. Second one, new predators. So predators, uh, may have been introduced naturally through through geological time or even by humans, and they can reduce the population of a prey species quite dramatically. So there is a relationship between them called predator prey cycles. We'll talk about that in a forthcoming video. And that means a fluctuation in carrying capacity at any one time. So that's where you get the oscillations in terms of between predator and prey. Another key thing, and this is quite topical at the moment in 2020, uh, new pathogens can reduce populations of a specific species. So some pathogens can be severe, can, will severely decrease carrying capacity due to the spread of infection across a population. So again, that's why certain species, that's why it's really important to have a, a varied uh, genetic um, pool and also to have diverse uh, genetics within one species. So you need variation basically for survival. And last one, competition between members of the same species. So for example, when uh, environmental resources, particularly abiotic factors, um, are reduced, then there's going to be competition for those things. So particularly for food, for mates, for reproductive mates or shelter, this means survival of the fittest and the strong populations able to withstand environmental fluctuations. OK, here, here's a recap of the looking at keywords in this section of work. So I'd like you to, again, have a look at these keywords and think about which keywords they would be related to um, ecosystems and populations. So I'd like you to pause the video again and have a go at the questions.
OK, so here are the answers. So all the oak trees in the wood, that is the population. The Siberian tundra is ecosystem. The salt concentration of a rock pool, that's an abiotic factor. The organisms living in a rock pool, um, all the organisms living in a rock pool are known as the community. And just move myself there. The effect of snails grazing on pondweed is known as a biotic factor. Hope you found this video useful. Please do uh, subscribe if this is on Dr. Biology and I will see you soon.